All right, so as mentioned, uh, to this point, we've been just using walls in a very generic way, just vertically extruded. We've used the types that are available in the library. Uh, but what we'll see in this demo is that we can actually customize the shape of the walls like we can customize the shape of the floors and the roofs. So to do that, I'm just going to start a new file. And this was just a new project using the default US Canada template, which I'm using because it gives me two levels, uh, which is all I need for this initial demo. So in level one floor plan view, I'm going to go to the architecture tab, activate the wall tool. And I'm just going to use a generic wall for this. I'm not worried about materials. And I'm also going to have this wall bound to level two, like I've done before. So I'll set the height for level two. And in my main floor view, I'm just going to create a simple little 10 meter, 10,000 millimeter long wall. Uh, the dimensions aren't really that crucial. I just don't want to do anything too large or too small. So that's a good mid range size wall. And uh, this is just a standard method that I've just done here. Just a simple vertical extrusion of the wall. Uh, no surprises here, but I'll see that if I go to a south elevation view and I select that wall, that I have access here to a profile for that wall, much the same as I've seen for floors and for roofs. When I click on that, I'll see that there is a set of pink sketch lines that are determining the shape of the wall, which again is just a standard kind of rectangular shape. If I want to edit that, all I have to do is just click, click on the pink lines and just move them around. As I do that, a warning will pop up letting me know that that standard rectangular shape uh, now no longer applies. If that's okay, I can remove the constraints and I can keep making edits. Uh, even though the constraints have been removed, you'll see that I still have some relationships uh, between these sketch lines. They are, for example, locked so that they are rectangular or 90 degrees. If I don't want that, I can just click on the padlock and uncheck that and then continue making edits. I could do something as simple as that and click the green check. If, for example, I was trying to mimic, let's say, a retaining wall that was following the slope uh, of a site, I could just do something as simple as that. When I click on the green check, no surprises, I now get a wall that is not rectangular but has a bit of slope at the top and on the side. Um, but I can take it even further than that. If I go back to that same self elevation view and click on the wall, I still have access to the profile. It's parametric, it's tracking that information. If I click there, I don't have to stick with any of these lines. I can just select all the sketch lines, hit delete, and create something entirely new. Like, for example, something like a circle shape. So if I click the green check mark now, it will give me a wall that is just simply this kind of floating disk. So when you edit the sketch, you'll have access to all the same tools that we've seen when we've edited the sketches for floors and roofs and other elements. Edit profile leads me to the draw panel. And uh, like I did initially or in the last step, I can just select the sketch lines that are there, hit delete, and then using all the tools that I'm used to on the draw panel, just create something entirely new. So if it has to have a complex shape to it, if I need to have some angles, some curves, if I need to introduce something that would be possible with the fillet arc tool, as long as it's a closed shape, it will generate a wall based on this sketch. And in addition to that, I can also have openings in the wall. So a closed shape is important for the outer uh, set of pink sketch lines. Uh, beyond that, I can also have openings. Like for example, if I just want to use the circle tool and introduce a little bit of an opening here on this side of the wall, it's as easy as that. It's still regarded as a 200 millimeter type. So that's what's determining the depth of that extrusion is just this 200 millimeter type. And as we'll see in a later demo, I can edit that and make a wall that would actually extend the length of the building.